morning, everybody. Because in this class, I only get to see you for short periods of time during the week. You read Loretta Cooks Up a Plan with Miss Sparrow. Tell me something that you remember from this last week. I remember that um, later in the book, when they had the solar oven, mm -hmm. they were experimenting and they were asking questions and and um, and like seeing how they can improve the solar oven. You remember a lot from the end of this book. Awesome. Today, we're going to focus on two major parts of this story. The first big question is, what is green engineering and what purpose does it serve? And the second is, what process do green engineers follow? So today, we're going to be traveling to Botswana, where the main character in our story lived. Are we in the same part of the world as Botswana? Yeah. No, we're not. No. Botswana is much farther south, along closer to the equator, which is what makes it a great place for our solar oven units. And Kyan, can you please hit the lights? So we know that Lorado takes care of her family, and each day she has to walk and collect firewood. Why does she need to collect firewood? What do you remember about that? So they could cook the food. So they can cook food. But she's running into a problem, a very significant problem. Each day she's having to walk farther and farther and farther to get the firewood. So she comes back and gets talking to her cousin from the university and her cousin is actually studying what we are going to be studying, green engineering. And her cousin tells her that green engineering is a focus of engineering that allows them to create technologies that solve a problem, but also don't have a big impact on the environment. So her cousin says, actually, I'm studying these different materials, these different technologies, and looking to create solar ovens, using the energy from the sun to cook, so that we don't have to go look for firewood, that we're not depleting that resource or using human resource of all our energy that we need to use to go get these things. And I'm using my knowledge of what I'm figuring out from my dorm around metal conductors and insulators, and I'm using it to create a solar oven. And Lorado says, I like that idea. That is awesome. And then she starts building and creating, and you are going to do the same thing. Your solar ovens are going to be very basic like these, right? This is one that's being used currently. This is the one in the illustration book, and this is yours. But they have things in common. They have the reflective piece here. Why might this be useful in the solar oven, and why might Lorado like this? That thing can, like, you can reflect the sun, and if you put it in the right angle, the aluminum foil will, emit, will trap the sun's heat directly into inside the, the box. So you're right. So, and we're going to be working this. And why do I have this plastic portion here? We can trap the um, steam and air inside. The steam and air, so we can trap the air inside. Heat the heat inside. So we're going to be looking at these things a lot more clearly. And Lorado actually turns into a green engineer like you. And she starts using a very specific process, one that you got introduced to last year. We learned about oil spills. And this year, here. She's going to use the EDP, the engineering design process. And she's going to ask a question, how can I make a piece of technology that doesn't have a big impact on the environment, like taking this wood, right? But also solves our problem, keeps me from having to go and get wood, right? Then she starts imagining. What types of things does she imagine? Solar oven. A solar oven, right? So she imagines making a solar oven. And then she has to plan to make this solar oven. And we, she does a really important thing in her planning. She starts looking at the resources that she's currently using and what resources she will need for the solar oven. So we're gonna take a break here and really focus on the resources she is currently using. And I'd like everyone to open up to page two of your journal. We're going to think right now like Lorado. You are going to look at the two main steps of the resources that she uses to create a fire. And she's calling this, and green engineers call this, the life cycle. For question one, you're going to look and say, what resources are needed to complete steps one and two? For number two, how 
does making the fire impact the environment? And step three, I want you to think of something that could make this process, not even the solar oven, could make this process more green. So what resources are needed to complete this step? So the, per like the person? Firewood. Oh, that's interesting. And a rock. rock. And match. Don't forget the match, because the match is what also helps make that fire. How does this how do these steps impact the environment? Um it, it kinda impacts the environment because like sometimes the firewood like um because it makes smoke climate and then the smoke can um can hurt like trees and animals and stuff. What are the resources they instead of fire like she could use the science somewhere? Now Isaiah, what's one impact on the environment that, that she's having by using this process? The smoke is one. The smoke. Okay, so you could think, hmm, how could she reduce that impact? What's another um What's another one, Carrie? What's another impact on the environment? Um, there's going to be less trees. Less trees. That's another. Anna had one I hadn't thought of. Well, when there's less trees, there's less habitat for animals. Okay, that's a third impact. Isaiah, what was one, one way that your team or your group thought to reduce her current impact and make her process more green? Maybe you could collect firewood that already fell from a tree. Raise your hand if your group came up with that solution. Uh, if you guys didn't come up with that one, what did you come up with? It? One of our ideas was that if there are fallen seeds from the trees, you could figure out how to replant so you're not killing any living things you can take from the things that are fallen. I love that you have all these ideas. Raise your hand if you have an idea about creating something completely new, a new piece of technology. Awesome, then you're gonna love this week, hands down. We were green engineers in that we asked a question about the process Loretto uses. We imagined ways that we could reduce the environmental impact using those same resources. And some of you already started to plan. This week, we're going to be going through this entire process, kind of in multiple ways, creating solar ovens. I'm going to give you a little preview. Lesson two, we are going to start learning more about these life cycles assessments, looking at resource uses and things that we use and finding ways as green engineers to analyze that environmental impact and make a change. So when I see you again, we're going to answer this question in lesson two. Thumbs up. All right. Awesome. Specifically with EIE, we have a real life problem that is existing in our time somewhere in the world that people are confronting. And so already with EIE, it allows kids to connect. It also allows me as a teacher to find other examples to, to connect. And in this case with solar ovens, we were able to start with the story, but then also bring in real images and real stories from places in Botswana and other Western African countries that are actually dealing with this. And it makes kids feel like I'm solving a real problem that actually exists. And so that makes EIE really unique, those cultural and real problems that are existing right now for kids to solve.